All right, let's carry on. Now, I don't think you can see it quite properly, but through this window here, there's a mannequin. And on the mannequin is a a facial item of some sorts, possibly a mask. But we need to go the long way around. Take these pissing dogs out first. We've got some sand. Nice. Four. Excellent. Over here. Jump onto... No. It's a wall run across and then leap onto the pole. Well, the broken column. And then we just wall jump like this. Some elaborate parkour action here, and now this is where you need to learn to balance on on the uh, pose very carefully and not fall off because otherwise the platforms retract in. And this one can be a bit um, a bit complicated. You're going to have to use um, Eye of the Storm. I'll use Eye of the Storm to be on the safe side. You can do it without, but I'd rather do it uh, with it. Leap over, like this, and then wall run across. I like that. You get to bounce off the... Uh, uh, a corner wall. And there's me using Breath of the Fate, or Breath of Fate. To blast enemies back. Probably one of the only few times in the game where that power is actually useful. Yeah, there we go. Through this breakable wall. And now we've got to be careful here. We've got to come down here. Make sure you don't fall down that hole. And you come back outside. All this just to get to the freaking mask of the wraith. I'm telling you. Now, when we get now, when we get to the mask, that is where I personally think is when the game gets really, really interesting, and you'll see why. Here we are. Cutscene time. Maharaja's tale is true. It will remain this way until my other self perishes. 
Only then can I remove the mask. Yes, we are the Sand Rife. And um, that little description doesn't tell you there. Doesn't um, give it away. Basically, um, we'll always have replenishable... Well, first of all, yeah, we need to return to the access hall, yeah. We'll always have sand tanks constantly replenished, so we can always use the sand. But at a cost that our health is constantly uh, slowly draining down. To the point to the bare minimum. It's basically the game's way of saying you've got unlimited sand, bloody use them. Now, yes, this is where I f think the game gets a hell of a lot interesting because some of the plot threads, well, the plot threads left open from the first half of the game slowly start to uh, slowly start to get answered. As all good stories do. And another good thing to also note, um, spoiler alerts if, of, if you haven't played the Two Thrones yet, but um, this is actually where the Prince's uh, split personality is born, from the moment he put on the Mask of the Wraith. Yes, uh, there is a moment where it becomes more apparent later in a bit of dialogue, and I will point that out, but uh, yeah, because of all the, the trauma of his family and friends, dying at the uh, hands of the Maharaja and his constant fear of being hunted down by the Dahaka the um, the prince developed a condition known as DID Dis Dissociative Identity Disorder in other words a split personality and this is the birth of that split personality right here this is the Dark Prince uh, as it's most commonly known as um, obviously we only see the start of it here and uh, the prince's dark personality becomes more apparent and more and comes more to the forefront in the third game, the Two Thrones. But yeah, just wanted to point that out. Now we need to come through this uh, dodgy trap-filled corridor to another sand portal. And I believe, yeah, I be, yeah, this is the last sand portal that we need to activate. There is no more sand portals. All the sand portals are now accessible and usable. Again, oh, I don't get it. I really don't. I press. You saw me. I pressed that button, and it didn't light up. Make sure nothing bad happens. Let the sand appear first, and then we can progress. And to get the final sand power. You gain Cyclone of Fate. This power lets you do the strongest ground attack, hurting several enemies simultaneously. Use this power when the Prince is surrounded by enemies. Yes. Uh, basically, this is the third and final upgrade to the Breath of Fate power. Uh, costs more sand to use, and is it worth it? No. Exactly. This is the Dark Prince. As I was saying, a uh, lovely little bit of dialogue there elaborates the fact that this is not the prince as we know it. This is his. This is the prince's other self. But yeah, that's uh, Cyclone of Fate. Is it worth it? Worth using? No, it's not. Stick to using Recall, Eye of the Storm, and Ravages of Time. Those are the three powers worth using. And yet, as the Sand Wraith, we, um, we are constantly reminded to abuse the Sand Powers that we are given. Otherwise, we are going to die very early on. We've got as much sand to use as possible. As you can see, look, it's slowly regenerating back. 
it's our health that's slowly going down and that was stupid but does it matter no it doesn't we can just rewind time and try again Keep trying until you succeed. That was stupid, Psycho. Wait for that to come back over. I could have cancelled the Island Storm then, but I'll let it play out. Why not? I've got to stay at the bottom until both blades are up. Slow down time and then leap over. And then, oh. can I jump? I can. I'll try. <laughs> yes, through the skin of my freaking teeth, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, abuse Eye of the Storm, whatever you want to get through these traps easily and the fastest way possible. Now I can't leap over there. Ah, there's a ledge there. So we need to slow down time, run up the wall and then shimmy along. We've got to wait for the opportune moment here to slow down time again like that come over drop down there we have it <laughs> oh that was freaking lucky there we go now with this oh yeah this one's an easy one just roll underneath and we have a safe fountain Right. That is one big ugly fucker. This is the Griffin. Only appears once. And it's a bit like the ogre where you only att you attack the feet, but there's one little issue with this fight. Just like, just it's the opposite of the sand wave where the sand wave's health is slowly depleting. Well, the griffin, his health is slowly increasing, or replenishing, shall I say? So I'm going to be using the combinations of Ravage of Time and Eye of the Storm just to get this done quickly as possible. Now when he does this, just got a preemptive pre when he's going to swoop down and then dodge out the way. Easier said than done, I know, but uh, as the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. And already we've got a full tank of sandbank uh, back. How freaking awesome is that? Ravages of time, ravages of time. Told you I'll be abusing this as much as possible. Oh yeah, I'm down to my only primary weapon now. Crap. So yeah. You got the sand to, to abuse, just keep using it. Whatever you you feel like doing to make this fight as simple as easy as possible, do it. In my case, I just storm and ravages of time. But I think um, I'll do it again. I'll do it in a minute, but um, do a couple more ravages of time if possible. But uh, I think with I the storm, you end up doing more damage. We'll soon find out. I get the attacks in. Yes, I'm doing more damage.
So, are the storm it is then? Oh, here we go. I remember one playthrough on the back on the PS2 with this. Um, I got to the Griffin bit, and the slowdown actually finished just as he was, as the Griffin was diving, heading towards the screen, and because it went from slow motion to fast mo motion, and it, let's just say I nearly cacked myself. It scared the shit out of me. And my health is depleting fast. That's alright. Handy to use recall. Didn't want to do that. Come on, we can do this. The problem is, even if you fight, uh, it's at the back of his legs. He's got these, his tail that he can whiplash you. There you go, done. I'll get back over there. No, I can't. I'm going to have to carry on. So, I. Anything bad happens, I've got the sand to um, use recall with. I think there's a le. Yep, yeah, right there, ledge. Not much really to talk about at this point. Just the fact that, that I still reckon that this part of the game is freaking awesome. Now we need to wall run. We wall run? Yes, because over there in the distance there's a pole. And I just undershot it. There we go. <sighs> nice, right now. We need to make our way back to the Grand Hall. But at the same time, dodging these freaking traps. Can I leap over? No, I can't. So let's try that again. Idea is we need to wall run and not be hit by the blades. Uh, that was stupid. Remember, use your sand powers. Wait for it to come down. And then we'll try again. There we go. Right, now here... You can see here, we can't leap over. So, how do we get across? Can't go up that way. But here's the clever thing. Yep, can't do anything about it. This is what we do. We have to walk one up here and then leap over. Oh look, we're back in the gardens. And we've come through that door that I, I remember saying ages and ages ago. I said about the door being in, in the distance and that will play a role later. Well, this is the role it plays. It's an exit door.
And now we can come down here and get the chest. Fight off a couple of uh, weak, weak-ish um, enemies, and then we can head our way back to the Grand Hall. Now these guys take a couple of hits, but even still, not a problem. I do remember there being a safe fountain down the bottom here, so I'm going to replenish my health, guys. See you in a second. All right, let's progress now. To help us there safely, we can't go over that way, so we need to come up here and do what we did earlier when we escaped, trying to get out of the garden's tower. Yeah, that was uh, a bit too soon there, Psycho. Oh, that's uh, interesting. The enemies, there's usually a couple of um, sand monsters here. No. They've, uh, well, they're not here. Yeah, that's still uh, not the right time. But I think you could do this without the um, slowdown. I did it before, yep. Old ways are the best ways, right. to uh, drop down here. Don't worry, that blade is not going to touch you. And once again, we use Eye of the Storm to make sure we can get ourselves through this doorway. And again, the enemies haven't respawned. Hmm. That is odd. And oh, the Crime Master's still over there. Well, we don't need to worry about him. Because we need to get down to the bottom. And not do that, Psycho. That is stupid. You need to wall run upwards on here. There we go. Now, if you was to come over here in the game's present, there is a breakable wall here where you could get a secret secondary weapon. And, uh... Oh, that's still Paul Dan. That's strange because I don't remember putting that down before. But, yeah, anyway, there's a breakable wall um, in the game's present in this area. It's got, um... A weapon stand in it and it's a unique weapon because there's about three or four unique weapons and that was concentrate psycho me talking and playing at the same time yeah there's in this game there's about three or four unique weapons that will never break uh, the only way you're gonna get rid of them is if you throw them but yeah there's one of those unique weapons is right here in the game's present it's a flamingo garden ornament. And I don't think I can... I'll try that again. Yeah, a flamingo garden ornament. But the flamingo garden ornament, the Rayman hand, and there's two others. I think one's a hockey stick? Um, yeah, there's a hockey stick. That can be found in the, great, in the Grand Hall. And I think there's a fourth one... Which I will be definitely picking up because it's my favourite one. Uh, later on. Get rid of these birds first.
Any more? Yep. There's another one. And another one. Now we can go down. So yeah, you've got the hockey stick, the Rayman hand, a flamingo garden ornament, and a fourth secret weapon, which I will be getting. But first of all, let's uh, replenish my health. Yeah, and those four weapons, where the wep weapon symbol is next to the health meter, those four weapons only have only have a question mark. That question mark means it means that uh, there's no health stats for that weapon because th those weapons do not break. They are infinite. You can keep using them over and over again. And um, I'll talk more afterwards. There's a cutscene now, so. So, uh, quick look at the map here. We can't get down to the Grand Hall this way. Find a way to the throne room. Yes, we need to find another way, but, um, as I was saying before the cutscene, um, about the four special weapons the Rain Man Hand and the Flamingo Garden Ornament, as funky and weird as they are, there's no point in having them because they do very little damage. The hockey stick does nice damage, but the one that I'll be going after, which is late, a bit later on, does a hell of a lot of damage. There's a, a horrible little side effect to it, but personally I think it's well worth it, considering the amount of damage it does. But yeah, going by that uh, cutscene... And quickly replenish my health here. I'm not going to bother saving. No. Press no. Um, so yeah, the um, the loose ends are starting to fall into place. We just saw there Kylina sending Shadi out to meet the prince out to sea. As what had happened right at the beginning of the game. And now we need to find our way back because, as you can see there, because obviously it's not happened yet, we've gone further back in time. We need to find our way back up ahead, so we need to use this um, ladder. Is, is it up here? Yeah, it's up here. Never seem to remember where it is. Oh look, Crowmaster. Deal with him quickly, there we go. Now while I'm here, I want to show you something. Remember me saying ages ago about a life upgrade in the first part of the gardens? Well you can see there, the door is shut, so you cannot access it. So when I say back then that that's your only chance to get that life upgrade, that is your only chance to get that life upgrade. Because you cannot access that area after you leave it. 
because obviously the, the the garden towers have not been activated yet nor has the prince gone at this point because we've gone further back in time um, so the room is non accessible look we cannot access it and in fact when um, when we were still with the prince and we went through that little corridor off the side of the hourglass room there's a little invisible marker as it were as soon as you step through it a lot of the rooms or a lot of the areas of the castle that we could access um, before up until that point becomes locked away and sealed you cannot access them once you step through that doorway I think it's to save um, uh, data loading but yeah we need to come over to here obviously we can't we need to go up the top there so we need to go over the other side I got up another flight of stairs. Flight of stairs, another ladder. You know what I mean, that thing that's made of wood and looks like it could break very easily but isn't. Oh yeah, so we'll run over here. always get the opportunity to uh, pick up a sword and we need to go through here and as you know up ahead is a sand portal that we've already used and obviously for story purposes we are allowed to use this sand portal again so I've been recording for quite some time now guys so I'm going to end the session here thank you very very much for watching hope you enjoyed um, the let's play so far and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next episode until then psych